How's it going everyone? My name is Michael SK and welcome back to the Fruit of Grisaya. In the last episode, Yuji and Sakaki finally got close to one another. Uh, it seemed to take a while, even so they were living together for months. They are still living in hiding, away from uh, Yuji's work, and also Sakaki's family. They are fugitives of the law, or something along those lines. But regardless, they're still here at this cramped-ass apartment. She's not allowed to leave, but hey, at least the two of them are together. And I'm going to admit, the last episode was a lot of fun to record. I was really having fun with really everything that was going on, uh, with, with Yuji's stupid-ass mentality with women. It was a bunch of fun. So hopefully, hopefully I can have a lot of fun in this one. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. The deed's been done. Yes, it has. <laughs> We've already changed our clothes, and Yumiko keeps wandering restlessly around the room, groaning at no one in particular. The girl's usual composure seems to have deserted her entirely. Look, can you try to calm down already? This isn't like you, Yumiko. I wish I understood, but I didn't. Or I don't. Having dug her own grave and then buried herself in it, Yumiko laments loudly. It's a pretty charming spectacle, but at this rate, I don't really know if she'll ever get a hold of herself. Alright, maybe this will help you settle down a little. Uh oh, they going, they going at it again? Pulling Yumiko in my, into my arms, excuse me, I brush her hair back and press my lips against hers. Aww. When I release my hold on her face, the girl blings up at me for a moment, then abruptly grows bashful. <laughs> Blushing from ear to ear, Yumiko tries to hide her face behind one hand. I'm not exactly the world's foremost connoisseur of cuteness, but this transformation is just too extreme. The sugar rush leaves me a little dizzy. Yes. Yumiko mumbles the words to herself as if she still isn't quite convinced they're true. I know, right? Pretty unbelievable considering where we started out. Oh yeah, she tried killing us. At first our communication was limited to slaps to the face and slashes with a blade. And before you know it, we've ended up here. I guess you could just shrug your shoulders and call it fate. Chance and coincidence did play a large part. Even so, I can't help feeling this all happened for a reason. Hey, Yumiko. I hug Yumiko again, much more tightly than before, and stroke one hand slowly down through her long hair. Let me say it again. I'm going to keep you safe no matter what. That's a promise. I'll be where you are, Yumiko. I won't leave you alone. Sakaki Yumiko was always on her own, always isolated. Gaining something new after all that time alone was bewildering. When the fog cleared and she realized what she wanted, it almost frightened her. She didn't know what to do. And that's why I need to make this crystal clear. I'm right here, not just to protect you, but to be with you. Have anything to say to that? A slightly apologetic expression flits across Yumiko's face. But as she looks up at me, it fades into a small smile. Hey! That's what I was hoping for. There's no need for apologies anymore. The only thing Yumiko and I need to give each other now is gratitude. Alright then, now that we have that settled, let's fix that Kazumi-kun of yours immediately. You heard me. It'd be pretty damn weird to keep calling me by my last name at this point, don't you think? Uh, you think, you, you'd think at this point they've, they've broken enough boundaries to, okay, whatever, never mind. And how long is that going to take? Yumiko looks up at me with a hint of reproach in her eyes, but after a moment she breathes in deeply as if to steal herself. Uh, 
Okay, then let's hear it. Once again, the girl takes a deep breath. This time she begins mumbling softly to herself like a nervous middle school student preparing to recite pie from memory. And then in a barely audible murmur, you, you, The instant the word squeaks out of Yumiko's mouth, her face appears to burst into flame. You know, us, us lovely Americans and, and many others here in the West calling others by their first name unless it's a very 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 formal situation or you'd use mr or mrs uh we don't really get embarrassed in situations like these so i can't really relate to anything that's happening here it's just kind of it's just kind of weird this contrast is really something i think i'm embarrassed by proxy in any case, all my points of concern regarding our relationship have now been decisively resolved. It only took an episode and some extra minutes. We're still fugitives with an uncertain future, but somehow I think I've gained a little peace of mind. Huh? What's wrong? All of a sudden, Yumiko seems to remember something. Her expression grows oddly serious. Uh-oh. That's right. What, is there something else? Before I can even finish the sentence, Yumiko's thin fingers dig into my arm in a vicious pinch. Ow. Guess we should have saw that one coming. Say what? Well, we kind of did. Yumiko's outburst of raw sexuality helped us understand each other's feelings. It was a truly fortunate event in that respect. But from that day on, I found myself sitting on my heels in penance every afternoon, enduring interrogations into my previous romantic career. And there is a romantic career that exists there. There really is. <laughs> ちょうその範囲を関東一円から東海近畿地方にまで広げていますが、依然として手がかりになるような報告はありません。現在、さらに手を尽くすように各所連絡は取っております。他に何かありますでしょうか。首に白。あお。ほ。何ヶ月もか
どうも最近爽快を前にして私の周りに不穏な動きがあってね裏で何か動いても無駄だよこちらだってバカじゃない変な動きをすればすぐにわかる何のことでしょうかうんチラを切るつもりならそれでいいただあまり目立つようだとこちらからも動くということだけは覚えておいた方がいい失礼します I hate this guy I really do 誰にも奪われるわけにはいかないのだよ誰にもな Like he really sucks Not sure how many times I need to say this before you get the message. I'm not planning to give myself up. So, Once again, JB and I engage in our regularly scheduled, rigidly formulaic, or formulaic conversation. She has classical playing in the background today. The volume seems just slightly louder than usual. There's no immediate danger approaching, but a good deal of caution is warranted. A Comparatively calm state of affairs. Well, it's never wise to feel completely at ease when you're on the run, but the lack of urgent problems does soften the psychological pressure a bit. What are we, five? Yeah, no problems worth mentioning. Sounds like a conversation between a college student and the big city, or in the big city, and his anxious helicopter mom. Then again, I guess I'm something of a pseudo son to JB, so there's nothing inherently strange about her worrying about me. It's just more than a little comical under the circumstances. Of course, it's also a necessary part of our carefully choreographed give and take of information, but still. That reminds me, I've got something to report, JB. I bought another cactus for my room over here, but a worm got at it right away. Got a little worried there for a while. Seems like they're actually capable of coexisting, though. Something wrong? Yeah. I borrowed JB's metaphor to inform her of recent developments. Not really the sort of thing I need to go out of my way to report, but there's no reason to hide it either. Even now, the cactus in question is no doubt waiting eagerly for the return of its worm. Yeah, what? That's some way to talk about the poor plant. I'm aware, thanks. The two of us have connected in the midst of a strange and unstable situation. It's going to be very difficult to maintain this peaceful balance for much longer. But for the moment, for Yumiko's sake and mine, I don't want her to be too conscious of that. Change is constant and ever present. Time moves us forward whether we like it or not. We bump into other people, unpredictable external factors that knock us off course. Our thoughts, our environment, our place in the world, even our ideology, everything shifts. And even in a world that's defined by change, human relationships are about as astonishingly volatile, or volatile, volatile excuse me, fuck, as it gets. We go from life to death, family to strangers, strangers to family. We meet and part, make allies and enemies, crown winners and mark losers. Some gain independence, while others sink into servitude. Some submit, and some rebel. Goodwill can change to hatred in the blink of an eye, and hatred to goodwill. Sometimes people fight their best friends to the death in the struggle for power. Sometimes people sell their family for trivial sums of money. Sometimes the subordinate who'd been treated like a dog launches a coup d'etat. Sometimes the dictator finds himself groveling like a worm before his old throne. I've seen it all. In the scope of things, the case of Kazumi Yuji and Sakaki Yumiko 
isn't anything out of the ordinary, but the last few months have certainly been full of changes. We started off as strangers. The mortal enemies worry doormates, the daughter of a client and the representative of a certain company, a guard and his principal, co-conspirators, and fugitives. And now a man and a woman. It was a pretty tangled road that brought us here. As for where it'll lead us next, who the hell knows? Certainly not the two people traveling it together. Well, that was nice. Holy shit, it's been a year! Time is really... Time's just going, man. We're, we're just going on. As I've grown more comfortable to my job, free time's actually gotten harder to come by. I've been attempting to... Or, I'd been attempting to do my work quietly and keep my head down, but it seems that's a rare trait among youngsters these days, earning me unintended recognition from my superiors. And I ended up being promoted to the supervisor of a small work team with five to six men. Normally, this would be something worth celebrating, but right now the goal is not to stand out, even in good ways. We may have to consider moving to a different location if I start getting ahead in life despite myself. My few days off are often spent on chores and housework. It's mainly cleaning and washing, stockpiling basic preservable food, and investigating the area as a precaution for the worst case scenario. Lots of housewife style labor, uh, except for that last one. Yumiko helps out as well, of course, but the girl had a pretty sheltered upbringing, and I'm getting the idea she isn't naturally dexterous. Even pretty simple jobs tend to give her some trouble. In any case, we began our work early in the morning today, according to routine, and it's roughly 2 in the afternoon by the time we're finished. Yumiko. Is that book really that interesting? Having wrapped up my work for the day, I inquire about the novel Yumiko's been reading intently. Ah, she's reading a novel and we're fucking studying a goddamn map. I think the reason for that should be pretty obvious. I'm going over our potential escape routes in case of emergency. Hard to say how practically useful repeatedly reviewing this will prove, but it's got to be better than doing nothing at all. Currently, we've nestled ourselves down in the home turf of the West Sutomu Railway Company, a bitter enemy of the East Beach Group since the pre-war era. It's safe to say Sakaki Michiaki won't be openly looking for cooperation in resolving his family squabble. He's not eager to show corporate rivals any sign of weakness. East Beach will tread lightly around here. This low-lying area of eastern Tokyo is particularly dense and tangled, and we're keeping a very low profile. I doubt private detectives will be able to track us down that easily. But since this location's ideal, it might stand out as a possibility to a competent investigator, Tracing a number of lines along our escape routes, I picture the movements of enemies who haven't yet materialized. That so? Thought I saw you smiling a little, though. That's impressive. I'm not under the illusion that I completely understand Yumiko just because we've slept together, but I didn't think her instincts were that good. You just said it was ridiculous, didn't you? Or is the book more suitable for general audiences? That's... understandable. What are you talking about? Instead of a response, she silently pushes the open book out in front of my face. Guess that's how it goes with the library books sometimes. Still, what a nasty little prank to pull. Yeah, what the fuck? Sorry about that. I should have flipped through it first, but the book had a pretty good reputation, so I figured it'd be alright. I won't make the same mistake again. Promise. Reading's virtually the only entertainment available to Yumiko under our current circumstances. I feel genuinely bad about letting someone ruin it for her like this. 
What? Something to say? Yeah, for what it's worth. Might as well read something decent if you're going to read, right? Uh oh. <laughs> like what? Hmm. Curtly deflecting the question, Yumiko again returns her focus to the novel. Yumiko. You sure you're not enjoying that book? No reason. Well, honestly, it's because she seems to be in a good mood for some reason. Maybe that note was actually a prank or red herring, and you just hit some clever twist in the plot you never saw coming. I thought you said it wasn't bad. Oh. Not much point hunting for foreshadowing then. In that case, what's she enjoying so much? I don't get it at all. While we're talking, mind if I make one small ob observation? None. Wasn't sure whether I should mention this, but... <coughs> Sorry, that, that wasn't a part of the dialogue. <laughs> actually dying wasn't sure whether I wasn't sure whether I should mention this but you're weighing me down Yumiko in a physical sense Yumiko has been using my lamp as her reading chair for some time now I'm not just talking about today either ever since our physical relationship began she's made a habit of unceremoniously plopping herself down on top of me to read her books not bothering to ask for permission first Come to think of it, I suppose this would be the only thing that's really changed about her daily routine after we made love. Yumiko wasn't quite satisfied with the explanation I offered regarding my romantic history, so I've been quietly letting her do as she pleases. But this seemed like a good opportunity to finally say something. Uh-oh. <laughs> Alright. With this brief reply, my objection is completely eliminated. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Is what a bother? Huh? But only a few moments later, Yumiko's haughty expression gives way to something a great deal more uneasy. No, it doesn't really bother me. I was thinking it might be a good opportunity to ask why you're always sitting on me. Come to think of it, I guess it actually feels a little pleasant, if anything. Yeah. Yes, really. This childish line of questioning prompts a sudden realization. I thought you'd been laying on the overbearing attitude a little thick lately. Maybe you were just trying to hide your embarrassment? The girl doesn't respond. But her face makes me think I might have hit the bullseye. So then, Yumiko's been bluffing all this time, acting confident to cover up her tim- tim- timid- fuck, watching my reactions out of the corner of her eye, secretly swinging back and forth between happiness and fear. I can't say some words, I'm sorry guys. By the time my thoughts get this far, I'm already petting Yumiko's head. Sorry about that. Determined to give the charming little coward some reassurance, I ignore her abashed expression and repeat the motion. <gasps> Whoa! Well, that's the first time you've called me that in a while. On that day, I made one request of Yumiko. She'd become an irreplaceable individual to me, so I asked her to use my name just as I use hers. Yumiko hasn't called me Kazumi-kun since then, but I guess the alternative still felt a little awkward. She mostly dodged the issue by using pronouns. I wasn't really upset or anything, but I have to admit, it made me feel a little lonesome at times. Was it deliberate? You really think I'd do something that cruel? My apologies. You're right, I'm a heartless monster. Can't believe I didn't even notice how much all this was bothering her. In retrospect, maybe JB was somewhat justified in referring to me as a menace to all womankind. 
Well, that was just... You're still a beginner, so I was just trying not to be too pushy. Because I wouldn't be able to stop myself. Damn, she's fallen for it. What? You're one high-handed woman. She lets the words fly carelessly. The cool-headed Yumiko I used to know is still there, but with these hints of anxiety and flashes of newfound boldness in the mix, somehow or other, she's turning into an undeniably cute woman. So in other words, you're up for it? Wowzers. God damn. <laughs> I felt that. What, no good after all? Why do we have to wait until night? I fail to see why that's a problem. A bath, is it? We have to econom econom economize. Why was I? <laughs> I'm just struggling tonight. We have to economize on the water bills as well, so we've restricted e ourselves to a single bath at night each. Normally, I just tell her to get in right now, but under the current circumstances, it's a legitimate reason for the delay. Maybe because of all the reading she's been doing lately, Yumiko's or Yumiko phrases this in an oddly poetic way. Well, it's definitely an in-character sort of thought, either way. You're still the same old Yumiko at heart, aren't you? Nope. A wry smile spreads across my face. Suppose I'll have to respect Yumiko's wishes on this one. Alright then, tonight it is. And once again, we fall silent and return to our idle reading time. Or such was the plan. Not sure what you're talking about. Of course not. It's just a map. I see. Suddenly I understand why Yumiko's been in such a good mood all this time. And that's got nothing to do with this map. It's a natural side effect of having you next to me. You know, sometimes Yuji's like really good with his words. Like he could be a fucking doctor of love. But then he comes up with this stupid shit that we saw in the last episode. And it makes you wonder. Huh. <laughs> Let's just have a laugh off. It's not easy to put in words, but right now I feel fulfilled. Every day's happy enough that I half expect things to fall apart catastroph catastrophically at any moment, that was hard, just as JV keeps warning they might. But for now, so long as the situation remains stable, I want to try and enjoy our time together, for Yumiko's sake as well as mine. She's never had much in the way of ordinary happiness. Surely God won't mind her indulging in a little sweetness, now that she finally has the chance. With that argument as a shield, I try my best to erase the ever-present trickle of anxiety from my mind. Yeehaw. Uh oh. It's time to go into the text. Bump that up to a hundred. And then eventually skip through everything to annoy everyone. As Yumiko emerges from the bathroom in a fresh set of clothes, I immediately pull her into my arms. Hey man, we don't got time. I got work in the morning. She blushes and looks up at me with a slightly hesitant expression. And that was the plan, I believe. You had all day for that, didn't you? So, so... Nodding to herself, Yumiko reaches up and takes my face in her hands. Has it literally just been, like, months since they've done anything like this? Is that... Is that sort of what I'm getting from this? Or was there a different, like, amount of time that's gone by before this time and I'm just getting everything mixed up? 
I don't know. I, I need answers. And bring our lips together. I gradually move my mouth against hers, savoring the softness and warmth of her skin. We've already uh, we've already seen a lot of this. Come on, let's let's get into the let's get into the content. Uh, there it is. There is the content. Uh, the content is is what I like. Oh my God! Look at Yuji's abs. <sighs> oh man. Is that f <laughs> God damn it? It's fucking writing. Fuck. I'm starting to think that uh that Sakaki did not like whatever the fuck just happened uh with Yuji's content. I I don't I don't think she liked it at all. Uh, just just my assumption from uh how she has that sort of expression like yuck that's what i was trying to trying to push towards <laughs> yeah yuji what what on earth are you trying to do yuji your abs they're poking me my hands slip inside her okay wait what's going on here i want to i want to see what's happening we got to we got to we got to see what's occurring here with Yuji's content and his abs. He's a really fit guy, honestly. Fuck all this. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. That's not Christian at all. That's a sin. Okay, I think the deed has been done yet again, and uh, something's happening here. Betrayed by her own relief, Yumiko's legs start to give out under her. Uh oh. <laughs> We tangle awkwardly against each other and collapse to the ground in a heap. Yumiko leans over me and presses her lips against mine. You know, even so she's completely out of breath, her legs have given out on her, she still has enough energy to, to just kiss Yuji. As I would. You didn't enjoy it? Humiliation? This is what you wanted, both of you. Man, there was nothing humiliating about all this shit I had to see. I almost saw Yuji's ass. I'm done bullying you for the moment. You don't have to say it if you didn't want to. Hey, I doubt it. The girl nuzzles her cheek against my body. Careful what you say. Euphoria is a title in this genre. She squirms around on top of me, slightly bashful. I actually have no idea what happened with this whole bullying thing. I really just skipped through this time. Like I didn't I didn't skim through. Like I was I was scrolling the mouse wheel. I really did not care for, for anything that was going on here. I can't wait for people to yell at me in the comments for skipping this. Okay, I actually have no idea what the hell they're talking about. Wait, we made a promise? My memory's not that bad. Wait, what was our promise? What did we promise her? That we wouldn't leave? Rolling Yumiko gently to the ground, I flip myself on top of her and begin to rain, ki to rain kisses all along her sweaty body. Uh oh, are they not done? Are, are they seriously going? Oh no, okay, they're done. All right, let's let's switch back into normal opacity mode. Ah, that's better. Sorry about that. In the drowsy, peaceful time after we finish making love, I quietly apologize. Yumiko stirs slightly against my arm, currently serving as her pillow. Ah oh, man, come on, we're not done here. Fuck. Seems I'm pretty dense when it comes to subtleties. That's always been a weakness of mine, but I ended up making you anxious over nothing. I see. Right, right. Yumiko's real thoughts leak out in a cute little mutter. I have to stifle a wry laugh. Is that right? I've got a lot of things to apologize for. Well, 
Why? The words slip quietly from Yumiko's mouth. I don't know what exactly she's remembering right now, but still. You don't have a thing to be sorry for, Yumiko. As I think I've said once or twice already. Not a single thing. We're both here because we chose to be. Am I wrong? Yumiko nods lightly. That's better. Apologizing doesn't suit you, Yumiko. Gratitude works much better, and Venomous insults best of all. Just a joke. Uh, she's talking about how our banter is lethally terrible, since, since I'm sure there's going to be censorship over the words. My apologies. Sorry, can't help myself. Before this troubling line of conversation can go any further, I abruptly change the topic. Hey, Yumiko. There's some place you want to go? Huh? Now that I think about it, we haven't really gone out together yet. I mean, it's probably going to be a little difficult while we're living like this, but I'd still like to know. Oh. Something wrong? Her voice is bashful, but also oddly reproachful. What's the problem? Uh, is that... is it that ridiculous a place? <coughs> Yumiko pushes herself up off the... up of the t futon. I think I meant to say off? Herself up off the futon? Or up of the futon? Oh, whatever. There's some reason you're wringing my neck? Well, it's not like she's really strangling me yet. Yumiko's fingers are twinned gingerly around my neck in a somewhat menacing fashion. That's all. Come on, don't you trust me at all? Don't look so concerned. I'm not going to mock you for being a little embarrassed. Come on, where do you want to go? Let's hear it. Hmm? Oh, hell yeah! <laughs> Even in the dark room, I can clearly see Yumiko's face go bright red. Her eyebrows arch violently as her eyes fill with tears. Also, she's strangling me. On the whole, I'm getting the impression she might be slightly upset. Ouch. Come on, the idea of you in an amusement park is just... Ow! <laughs> Sorry for familial love, playing up how pitiful she is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yumiko, I recall the story she told me under the bridge that rainy summer evening. For years, she clung desperately to her quote-unquote family, only to be betrayed again and again. Why'd they have to do quote-unquote? It, it's got quotes right there! <laughs> In the end, the girl gave up on all her hopes. She armed her body and mind with blades against a hostile world. But right now, Yumiko's found someone she can believe in. Or at least, she's trying very hard to convince herself she has. And what she wants most from that person, from me, is exactly what her family couldn't give her. Laughing at that was a bit much, even as a joke. Yeah, alright. Let's go to an amusement park. Yeah, don't know when we'll be able to pull it off, but I'll make it happen. That's a promise as well. Hey, how about a little warning before you jump all over me? Yumiko throws herself against me like an excited child. Not a problem. I had it down as Yumiko's style cuddling. Ooh. Okay, do me a favor and stop licking my neck. Well, okay. I thought I thought at first it was just a regular kiss. I take it back. It might have started off as child's play, but things quickly take a turn for the sexual. Oh no. Cut it out. I know we just went a couple of rounds, but if you keep this up, I'm going to get hard again. What? Uh oh. 
それともこんな私は嫌い I'll make you regret tempting me. Uh oh, no, not again! Two people who had always been alone slowly moved closer to each other, seeking out something they'd been missing. It was a very happy time. But even so, the stress of a life constantly one misstep from disaster would gradually take its toll. And Yumiko and I were too distracted by those intoxicating moments of happiness to notice it creeping up on us. Oh no. Things are about to go shitty. Uh, months are uh, months are passing again. Time's really just going by. I don't know what time it is, and I don't really care. More accurately, I don't have the energy to care. I smash asphalt and cart off the rubble like some of some sort of convict. I carry earth and sand around like a mindless machine, and at the end of the day, I'm paid chicken feed. Since that became my daily routine, these moments of temporal disorientation have gotten pretty common. Never happened to me before. There was usually a very precise schedule to follow at my old job, so I've always been alert to the passing of time. I was genuinely surprised to see that part of me change. Living in an unfamiliar world really is exhausting. Maybe it's because I was musing about these things. Damn, I forgot to buy ingredients for dinner. I knew I had to pick something up right, out, right until I actually got to the shopping street, but. The mental note I made to myself after checking the fridge this morning just fell right out of my mind at some point. Of course, the instant I got home and saw Yumiko's face, it popped right back into my head. I'll go back and pick up something right away. I won't deny it, but my condition doesn't necessarily have any bearing on the situation. I've been trained to use my judgment to produce optimal results under any given set of circumstances. I'm hungry, but there's nothing to eat. Therefore, I'm going shopping. You, Yumiko? Well, can you? There's a great deal about this idea that makes me nervous. Putting my supposed softness aside for the moment, stop insulting the woman I love. <laughs> Got her in the weak spot. What's wrong? Your face is red. I wasn't really trying to fool you, but can you at least decide if you're happy or angry? When you snarl at me with a mushy expression on your face, it's hard to know how to react. Depends on how they've been raised. Look, Yumiko, I'm not saying you can't handle it. I just don't want to force you to do things you might not be cut out for. That's not what I meant. I'm sure you could pick up housework if you put your mind to it, Yumiko. Just feels like you're rushing things. Why not get used to it little by little? Interacting with strangers isn't exactly your strong point. Remember the time you stood frozen for 30 minutes trying to pick out a single crepe? After wavering indecisively over what to buy, the girl got so self-conscious that she couldn't even flee. Never seen anything like it. I mean, I doubt it's always that bad, but seriously, how can you not be a little uneasy about this? Then again, maybe that's part of the reason Yumiko wants to do this so badly. It's a chance to overcome one of her weaknesses. Alright, alright. In that case, at least let me come along. Yeah, but... Don't worry about it. It's not severe enough to be a problem. Uh, I think I want to call the shots when it comes to my own body, at least. <laughs> what? I didn't catch that. Hmm? Yumiko looks up at me with a suddenly sulky expression. A stab of guilt runs through me. If the girl's doing this deliberately, she's a frighteningly good manipulator. But of course, I'm perfectly aware Yumiko's not capable of such skillful self-control. 
でね私重いかしら No, I'm happy that you're worried about me. There's no one alive I trust as much as you, Yumiko. It's true. Okay, I think you're officially going overboard on the jealousy. And I'm definitely enjoying it too much. Well, yes, but. What's wrong? Ah, oh, come on. For a moment, I'm at a loss for words, but... Has that been on your mind? Sorry to disappoint, but... I've never thought of you as a burden. Not even once. Stop putting the worst possible spin on everything. It's not a lie. That said, I can see where you're coming from. I messed up on this one. I was being overprotective. Understandable that you misunderstood. It was clearly my mistake. Thanks, Yumiko. You're all heart. Seems we're finally back to the somewhat prickly status quo. I'll be honest with you. Right now, I'm pretty damn exhausted both physically and mentally. Once I sit down, I don't think I'm going to be able to get back up for a while. I can handle the cooking, but just thinking about walking around is depressing. Could I ask for your help, Yumiko? Yeah, appreciate it. As she hunts noisily for a no for a notepad, excuse me, Yumiko's eyes seem noticeably brighter than before. I laugh wryly to myself, too quietly for her to hear. I know I'm being a little indulgent, but I'm not Yumiko's guardian, and she's not my ward. We're partners. I want to respect her opinion and work through our disagreements as equals. Now, of course, as long as we're fugitives, that pretty ideal or that pretty ideal won't always be possible. There are going to be times when she'll have to do what I say. I'm just more experienced and knowledgeable when it comes to self-preservation. But as for today, I just walked through the shopping street and performed my normal observations. Tired as I may be, I'm confident I would have noticed anything strange. And more than that, there's a purely selfish reason I want to let her go. It feels nice relying on Yumiko and being relied on in return. Simple as that. Alright. What's wrong? Weren't you leaving? Hmm? Oh, I get it. As Yumiko tries to slide past me, I seize her arm gently, then pull her into my embrace. Before she can object, I begin sucking on her mouth. That's one way of saying that he's kissing her. Okay, calm down. Oh my fucking... Are they, are they even going to go shopping? After a few long moments of mutual tongue wrestling, we finally separate again. Was I wrong? Yumiko reflexively starts to deny it, but tapers off cutely into the truth. Why so meek all of a sudden? I'll be waiting. Why don't you back out there, alright? <sighs> After seeing Yumiko off, I sit down heavily on the spot. The overworked muscles in my back ache dully. My neck, shoulders, arms, and legs are as heavy as lead. I exhale deeply, pushing all the air out of my lungs. It's been a while since I quit my initial public works construction job. Couldn't help getting too familiar with the place. Ended up standing out more than I wanted to. Since then, I've been regularly changing employers, deliberately going for more short-term work. Downside is that I can't get used to any one job. The exhaustion's been building up quietly over time. Or, or for a while now, excuse me. My body will probably adapt to this lifestyle eventually. But it's definitely going to take some time. Well, I guess I just have to keep at it. Even resisting gravity seems like a complete nuisance right now. I let myself collapse to the floor. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Once Yumiko gets back, it'll be time to make dinner. Until then, I might as well relax a little. I flop over onto my side and to get comfortable, and then push myself back up off the ground. Come on, Yumiko. My eyes focus on a small object lying on top of our low dining table. How are you planning to pay without your purse? 
You're still beating yourself up over that. There's no point in dwelling on this. Let's put it behind us. Yumiko has been like this ever since I delivered the purse she forgot earlier. Well, I understand it's because she feels genuinely guilty, but still. Like I said, you're not a burden to me, and it made me happy that you tried to help. I know you were concerned about me, Yumiko. That's what counts. Let's sleep. I got work tomorrow and all, you know? After Yumiko nods in agreement, I slide into my bedding. It annoys me that I can't find anything better to say. A few clever words could probably cheer Yumiko up. Maybe even get her laughing about this. I'm doing the best I can, but my own clumsiness makes me wince. Wish to hell I could trade my natural talent at being a sarcastic ass for the ability to comfort her. Yeah, honestly, that'd probably help in a lot of situations. Might be time to start thinking about what comes next. When I analyze the situation calmly, right now I'm physically and mentally exhausted. <clears throat> I'm very near to the limits of my endurance. However, that's absolutely not because Yumiko's burdening me down. It's because Yumiko's at my side that I'm able to keep struggling forward. That's genuinely how I feel. Hmm. That's a pretty decent line, isn't it? Alright, I'll have to try and work that one into conversation tomorrow at some point. Even as the thought's running through my mind, I'm starting to slip down into darkness. When is shit gonna hit the fan? I feel like it's coming. なら、せめてマッサージでもしてあげる。ユージ。そう。もうね、たの。よっぽど疲れていたのね。私がもっとユージの力になれれば。ね。ユージ。うん。言っては<笑> Hmm, I wonder what she was going to say. Alright, so we'll end the episode here because I don't want to cut us off in the middle of context and we're somewhat almost out of time. So I'm I'm thinking that next time, that's when shit's going to hit the fan because things have been too good for too long. We've had two great episodes of these two characters bonding. I'm pretty sure something's going to happen next episode that's just going to fuck things up so thank you for watching guys i hope you enjoyed if you did make sure you leave a like subscribe all that fancy jazz uh, another 50 subscribers we'll get another episode out and uh you know after after sakaki's route i'm, I'm jumping right into michu's so if, if you if you want to see her route you know we just got to get done with this one and then we'll do the same thing with her route every 50 we'll get an episode of hers out so um yeah, that. Be ready for that at some time in the future, since I feel like we're coming to the end of this one. Uh, but yeah, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.